Hi and welcome to Barry Harris Masterclass Reviews. I am your host, Michael Haynes, and this is episode 001, much anticipated and delayed. <laughs> On Masterclass Reviews, I'll be examining uh, the videos that I took during attending classes with Barry Harris in, in Manhattan. And I'll be looking at the, 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 you know, his concepts and the methods um, taught as well as be, I will be featuring many highlights from those nice, interesting highlights. It's not going to be in chronological order. Um, for instance, I'm just start, um, starting on um, a session on January the 21st, 2020, simply because it was a great night. It was a fabulous night. There was a lot of big hitters that came out there, a lot of interesting um, personalities turned up and it was a great night. So I'm just going to start right there. Also, there, you know, we've had this beautiful movement that, um, Barry taught us and I'll be using that. So as the topic says, it's, um, passing chords on the fifth, sixth, the sixth chord on the fifth. That's what it, it really is. And that's the name I give to it that, um, Barry did not give it that name. I just, um, interpreted it as being, um, you know, that's what it was really doing. So I call it passing chords to the sixth on the fifth. So, um, we'll go right into, uh, the session that I recorded and we'll have a look at it. And then I'm going to break it down for you. So here goes. You know, Tommy, what Tommy Fly can do with Tommy. G6, L6, G6, L6, G6, up a half step and back to G6. And he did it just like this. But he did it with two hands. G6, F6. Put your hand up there. <laughs> <laughs> That. Yeah. How you doing? I do one note. I do three notes with this hand. One note. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Uh, Up ahead. Go. Play. Yeah, that's my turn now. Yours to me. <laughs> now. Ah, I nailed it. I nailed it. That was good. <laughs> the night has a thousand. No, I, 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 uh, this was the first time I met. Um, I saw this guy, but he <laughs> 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 uh, clear. So, um, you might know who he is, but. Amazing how he applied that the movement to this style of playing. Stepped out of a dream. <laughs> <laughs> he tried it, did you? Yeah, yep. you tried it, did you? To do it. <laughs> it wasn't bad either, you see? See, those small things are what you can move. Big mm -hmm. things, nothing. Those teeny things, what you can yeah, we're gonna pause it there for now. Yes, we so you know after that we just kind of rocked out and you know we had fun. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna give you a clip of that. So stick around and so let's break this down now. We begin with, and as Barry said, you're gonna use this one note in the left hand and 
the other notes in the right hand. So we start off with a G7. Right. Then we go. Um, not, not G7, G6, G6, which is E minor 7, F6, the same as D minor 7. Then we go again to G6. So we just kind of use inversions of the G6. Get an F6 or a D minor 7. G6 or E minor 7, upper half step. And then we come down. All right, do it a little faster. Do that again. Ah, that was wrong. As Barry said, just don't put any other notes in it. All right. So here goes. What um, now? This is the G G six, and when you play that over a C note, look what you get. You get a C major nine, which is a popular chord that we would use, you know, in various um, parts of any song that you know, ballad. So. Um, what I discovered as well is that you can also play this movement coming downwards. I'm going to show you how you can do that as well. All right. So on the over as the the sixth on the fifth, instead of just playing, you know, just a plain old um, C major ninth, you can put some movement to it. Right. All right, and you can also do it, as I said, backwards. So look, check this out. We do it like you hear that. So here we have a C nine. What I've also discovered, you can play it. Two octaves, again as a C9 passing chorus. See that? All right. So what I've also discovered, you can not only play it as say um, use your passing chords on the fifth of the chord that you want. You can also use it on the on the, the tonic or you know the one of the chord. And I'm gonna show you how I do that a little later. So let's um go back into um the rest of that video. It was a wonderful night and we kind of just rocked out on a few songs. So I'm gonna give you a little clip of that and then I'm gonna show you how I apply this technique, these movements to um a familiar song. So here we go back into that um the rest of that uh that night that's uh Tommy Ward winning the pianist Sullivan Sensation of jazz singers, the marriage joy. Yeah, you're gonna hear her singing in a bit. You're gonna hear her singing in a bit. Don't worry about it. You're gonna hear her. Yeah, and then we went into a bit of blues. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to that again. So I'm just giving you clips. That was some Samara just coming up there. And I'm gonna go back right into showing you how you can use that uh on the one as well. All right. But before we do that, let's let's apply that movement to a song. If it's magic, 
Why can't it be everlasting? Like the sun that always look 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 at it shines. Like the poet's endless rhymes. Like the galaxies. Here I'm gonna use the movement for two octaves now. In time. All right, so that's a simple applica application of that movement. And as you will see, we were going into that kind of um, bluesy kind of um, session at the end there. You can actually use that same movement in a blue. You know, I found out, in, like, for instance, if we're in G, you can actually use this. You just hold the seventh in your left hand, All right? All right, let's try it a little bit. Oh, that's wrong. You see, that's what Barry says. Just play the right notes. <laughs> so we go. All right, so using the same movements, just back to the same G6, but this time we are using it over um, a dominant seventh open voice in here. That yeah, gives you kind of G13, but you just use the passing chords. Let's do it, let's do it slowly. something like that so and here we are rocking out to uh, a blues in G as well and uh, I'm gonna give you a little clip, clip of that here is um, uh, Samara <laughs> Just, you know, the impromptu stuff, the impromptu stuff. Please don't join me in my bad mood, because I don't intend to stay. Don't come on down, you're just a true. You go wrong. Play. You're in the sea, it's me. You don't know I'm okay. <laughs> That's yours truly. I, I had a piece of the action too. <laughs> Baby, I love the way you walk. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Without me, they say. Mm -hmm. I tell you one thing, one you tell me is fine. I tell you three and three, you tell me you don't know anything. I don't know. Oh my gosh, you make no sense. Oh, I was making any sense with those lyrics. Keep on walking, baby. <laughs> yeah, so you know, we, we, had, we, had, we, had fun. we had fun that night. <laughs> so, again, you know, it's the passing chords on the sixth, basically, that he showed that night. So, C and the, the sixth, you have G6. Put it together, you get a, a G9. Ouch, here we go. Gotta practice as the, as the guy said, you gotta practice that. Mm -hmm. 
Then you can do it as a blue. It's giving you a G um, 13. Um, you know, just various versions of the G7 chord that you get in there. And as I told you, there were some big hitters out there that night. And right now, we, we're going to look at uh, a clip from the um, multi Grammy Award winning um, singer. Cecile McLaurin uh, Salvant, and she's been accompanied by another Grammy Award winning artist, um, pianist, Sullivan Fortner. So let's get a little clip of that and, and that's it for tonight. Beautiful. For you I pine for you. So that's uh, Sullivan. You have um, they're they're I'm doing a selfie with Barry, and it's after midnight. Time to get home. 